want to know the reason why no one shows interest in your art? Well, your art is boring. But already by clicking on this video, you got on the fastest train to change that. And don't you click away. If you don't take time for stuff like this, then your art will forever suck. Mm -hmm. This is called learning and you need that. <laughs> Keep watching. I will show you 5 tips to level up your artwork in just a head turn. Oh, and here's a little secret. I actually have 6 tips to share with you. And the 6th is my favorite. Be sure to stick around until the end. Here we have one of my favorite illustrations. It's a little bit magical, but also sci-fi. It's already quite colorful, but to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more colors, we will apply a chromatic aberration to it. And to do so, we click on adjustments and choose chromatic aberration. Then we will increase it. See how there occur these rainbow-like effects on the borders of the character, but this is absolutely too much. 6% should be good to go. It gives this interesting kind of stylized look to your illustration and sets it apart of other artworks. And that's what we want. Next, let's talk about gradients. Gradients can help to set a particular part of the artwork apart. For example, here I want to emphasize the area where the woman peeks out of the water. Therefore, I use a vignette by adding a multiply layer on top, select a mushy brush and a grayish color. And then I darken the edges of the illustration. See? Another gradient example would be this one, where I just add a warm pink gradient to give the illustration more color variance. Another way to add interest to your illustration is by incorporating a structure, something like noise or maybe a paper texture. That can help to make it look more like a vintage style or even like it's made with traditional art. Okay, for example, this illustration, also one of my favorites, some might argue that it looks quite digital. There are some areas that look flat or I don't know what they think because I like it, but many, many don't like it. That's the reason why we will add some noise here. By adding a new layer on top that we set on overlay. And then we go to adjustments and search noise. By increasing the strength of this effect, there occurs this grainy texture. And we can also adjust the sizing of these cloudy things with the scale slider here. Usually I would go for something about 20% for the scale and also 20% for the strength. See how it looks less synthetically now and more crisp? It's because when you add a little bit of noise to your illustrations, they will also occur a little bit more sharp. If you want to go even further than just noise, then you could implement a paper texture or a paint texture. Just go to Google and Google paper texture or I saw some great ones on Etsy as well. But today I will go for one from Pexels, P Pixels, Pexels, however they are royalty free. This one looks interesting. In your drawing program import that picture and arrange it that it will fill in the whole canvas. Maybe you have to duplicate it like me here to create a filling but also even structure. And now the magic trick. Set that layer on multiply mode and then lower the opacity to your liking. Nice, huh? Looks like I've made this illustration with real colors on watercolor paper. Now let's talk about blurring. This technique involves selectively blurring certain parts of your illustration to focus more on the focal point. This artwork here is actually a bit older one, but it's perfect to show you what I mean. In the adjustment section, I choose the perspective blur function and then the function with the brush to only select specific areas. When I start blurring parts of her hair like this, here and there, then we suddenly start to draw the viewer's focus more on her face, what we want. We could even go further and add a background, which is in this case very detailed and therefore distracting. That's why we will completely blur it. It's a very great feature if you're lazy, because you could simply draw a very simple background and then blur it and no one will know that there were no details and it still looks professional. Another way to enhance your finished artwork is by tweaking the colors a little bit. Honestly, I don't have any art piece where I didn't do that in any kind of a way. 
for example here, I wanted this to look like Elsa in a pretty dress, but it lacks a lot of contrast and I wanted the mood to be more cold. And now we can do that by using color curves and play around with them. Just so you know, all of this is more a playing around than a straightforward process. Don't be afraid of the color curve tool. And additionally, to make her skin look more natural, I make some changes in the color balance. I just try things here and see how it goes. Another trick to change the mood in the colors is by adding adjustment layers. Again, a thing of trial and error. However, what often works is to duplicate the finished illustration and put it as an overlay layer over everything, but only on a low opacity. Do you see the difference? Probably this is one of the most important tips here, but wait for the end. Adding light. By adding rim light or glow or whatsoever, you give your artwork that real sense of depth and Death. Depth. And that makes it really stand out. Here we have a drawing I made for a DTIYs challenge on Instagram by Artlies and I will link her handle in the description below and you should definitely check her out. However, here you see the real power of light. Not boring, boring. Not boring, boring. How did I add this light effect? For the harsh lighting effects, the rim light, I use a add layer. Then I choose a light color and a sharp brush. And just add in some rim lights like this. For just a soft glow, use a color dodge layer. You can also use the add layer. I also used it a little bit in here, but it will be very harsh. I like to use a color and a mushy brush. And just add a little glow here and there. And voila! Now stop! Before you go, please don't feel like you have to use all these techniques at once. Less is always more. Yeah. Now you can go. But if you're interested in more tips, then I'll see you in the next video.